Welcome to Content Crusaders, the podcast where we save the world one Instagram account at a time by taking ugly brands and make them beautiful in around 20 minutes. Hosted, as always, by Sydney-based content creators Megan and Dominic Lonerigan. We've won a few awards for our blog, Citizens of the World, but more importantly, we make a living doing what we do right here, helping businesses translate their story on social media. Join us as we visit a random geolocation from across the globe, find a business, and hack how to update their social strategy in real time. P.S. guys, we use the term ugly pretty loosely. We just mean businesses who aren't traditionally sexy or easy to photograph beautifully because mm, where's the fun in that? Here we are at episode five. Welcome. This was, this is our final episode. No, it's not. No, we, didn't we make a plan to only do five? Well, we did, but we're going to do other ones. Oh, you, so you're enjoying it now, are Well, I mean, you? yeah, I am enjoying it, but we're actually going to do other ones that I want to, you know, that, <laughs> that I want to talk about in terms of like, yes. you know, photography usages and all that kind of jazz. Oh, don't spoil Whoa. the surprise. Exciting photography usages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you yeah, you want to talk about that, don't you? Yeah, but the, the reason is usages seems to be an issue – that is com- has come to more prominence since Instagram launched and the burgeoning of the screenshot and share culture. So when you were a photographer years ago, usages, everyone just kind of got it, right? Um, well, I think the point... The usages still exist. You you talk oh, about really? the middle world. Yes, they do. Feels like they don't. Well, well <laughs> you, because you are in that world of... Screenshot and share? Don't. But if you... Th- if you if you think about a TVC mm-hmm. um, or an advertising, you know, where someone is uh, um, commissioned to be in a ad, mm-hmm. then they're estimated to go out to a certain reach of people. That's yep. why you're getting usages. Yep. yep. Because this ad potentially is going to go to 250,000 people because it's televised at this time. That is why you're getting a certain amount of usages. So then if they're just like, sweet, I've done that. Oh, by the way, I'm going to use it in America now. Then you're like, hang on a minute. My face shouldn't be in America because well, you haven't paid for it. You can understand how it's a bit of a minefield now because of social media. It's a global market. It's not just an Australian market. There is. So then you're also talking about the fact that a business has commissioned a photographer to sell their product. Mm -hmm. So say their product is floor tiles. Yeah. What are then the grey guidelines? Because floor tiles are all the same. Yeah. What happens if another business goes, I really like those photos. I'm going to use them to promote my business. This is... Is a whole thing, it's and I think so this needs to be a whole, whole thing. This the needs to be a whole episode, and with this actual episode is not about that. No, but you're getting me in it. I'm getting. See, see how passionate he is. <laughs> He's passionate. So we're, we're going to dedicate a whole episode to that. As would most photographers. Photographers. Mm-hmm. Um, we thank you guys for sticking with us from last episode. We are so sorry that was all over the shop. <laughs> It was a little bit. I didn't even want to listen back to it. You didn't want to listen back to no, it? No, it was, it I, was But it was we a great cursed. topic. I think we were cursed, yeah, right? Yeah, when we were recording it, um, at one point the camera fell off and then the sound came, fell out. And, and then the computer crashed three times. Oh, so it was a bit of a mission. So props to Dan who helps us edit our podcast for making dreams come true. <laughs> yeah, no, <'cause laughs> <laughs> Even that was a nightmare because it all sent in weird file format. Oh, anyway, let's anyway, not go there. But We're guys, sweet this time it's, uh, it's going to be good. All right, let's get on target today. Okay, stay on target. Where are we, we going? So you said to me the other day, you're like, Megan, can you please just get out of America and Canada and find another country? And I was like, Oh yeah, there are other countries to look at. Yeah. So we had a little think, and Dom and I once took a really interesting road trip through Scotland years ago. It was epic. It was amazing and we got some incredible shots. But um, something that wasn't as incredible was how... Shout out to uh, 
Brett Galvin for getting married over there and sent and hiring me as a photographer. Yeah, shout out to Brett Galvin yeah, from, from Min Partners. From Min Partners. PR. Yeah. So the thing about Scotland is it's an incredibly stunning, beautiful, breathtaking country, but the service industry is needs a bit of tuning up. Yeah. Little, it needs. To, I'm just going to put it out there. It needs a, a, a little bit of tuning up. Why do you think it's? Why do you think that it, it is like that? Because I reckon they're just like, I reckon they live in the most epic country in the world that is only really, really epic for like two months of the year in terms of its weather, mm-hmm. and it just gets jammed full of tourists. It's like living on the central coast. Really. Yeah, it's because Scotland's you live on like the, the central, central coast. coast. You live on the central coast and you're like, oh, this this is sick. Mm-hmm. And then for two months of the year, it's just full of tourists. And they ruin the bleachers. You know, okay. they come up here and trash all the bleachers. Okay, I'll let, you, I'll let you go but on that So tangent. I reckon that's like, that's like Scotland. But the, also the difference with Scotland is their accommodation is really difficult to get. Mm-hmm. Really difficult to get, and a lot of places are Airbnb. Mm-hmm. So not only are you like bombarding them with tourism, but you're living in their kind of Airbnb in their house, and they're like, oh, "I'm just so off you." Okay, off so it. to give you some context, um, <laughs> because Scotland gets so popular in summer, but then is quiet for the rest of the year, the incentive to have like major hotels or anything big in all these towns and cities doesn't isn't really there. So it is. A very Airbnb or B and B centric country, yeah, or but pub that, or that kind of you pub, know, pub that kind sort, of thing. Yeah. So, coming from Australia, we were like, "Oh, a B and B, how charming! We'll go and stay with them." But and we struggled to get accommodation. Hey, like in some areas, we, we were paying three hundred pounds once to stay hey, above in tents. A, to stay ab- once to stay in a tent. No, that was one hundred. And once so. to stay in a pub on someone's Superman sheets in a spare bedroom. <laughs> so it was crazy. And at one point we were staying in an actual proper hotel and <laughs> our key opened every door. Our key uh, w- well <laughs> we, we it was such a weird hotel that we looked on TripAdvisor and someone said be, caref- be careful, check your key and see if it opens any other rooms because ours did. So we were like, oh, let's just give this a try. And it did. And hey, it presto. Did, yeah. So they kind of seemed annoyed when we went to the front desk and said, hey, guys, do you mind if we move to a different room? And they were a bit like faulty towers, like, oh, what? We watched a lot of faulty towers that trip. I'd say if, if, you're, if you want to sum up the hotel industry in Scotland during summer – recommend faulty towers for a small percentage of them we just happen to stay in all of them the yeah. ones that were like that yeah. <laughs> i think it'll paint a picture of what scotland's um but that does, doesn't mean the people aren't incredible no. the, the country is not amazing is. so but, so that brings us to where we're going okay so, cool um and paints we, a picture we once had a, a huge night in inverness because being in a being an australian <laughs> um dom let me do the map planning and I like Loch Ness and Inverness are just like right this on like right together on the Scotland map but because I'm Australian I assumed that that distance meant like half a day like a day's driving of driving driving. it turns out that we spent one night in Loch Ness and I was like cool you ready to do a big drive today to get to Inverness it was 15 minutes down the road (laughs) So we went to large in Inverness. We kind of were a bit shitty with each other, and we got really pissed. And it has it has a it has a like a I have a tender spot in my heart for this place. It's also is full of castles and history. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott, I love Scotland. So Inverness in Scotland. We're coming out, young. For you. Cool. So that was the longest intro ever that we've ever done, but I thought it was important to give some context. Yeah, I think definitely (laughs) some context to what it's like in Scotland town. Yeah. So I went to the Inverness, Scotland geolocation, and for the most part, one, I really struggled to find a business to feature because I don't (laughs) think the uh, Instagram, like, geolocation tagging is big for businesses in in Inverness. Either that or they're so popular... Like their Instagram doesn't need any more marketing. Yeah. I think it's what, probably more likely that they're just not 
geotagging. Not geotagging. geotagging. <laughs> Businesses, remember, geotag your photos. It's very important and it's a great way for people to find you. Yeah, 100%. So we, f- we came across this account called Loch Ness Honey. Cool. So if you're following along on in your car, pull over <laughs> and, <laughs> and pull up <laughs> at- Drive with your knees. Yeah, Instagram.com <laughs> at- Instagram.com slash lock as in L O C H Ness N E S S as in Loch Ness. Yep, yeah, as cool. in the monster. Yeah. <laughs> and then honey. Loch Ness honey. They've got twenty seven posts, eighty five followers, and they're following ninety seven people. So they're fresh. They're fresh into the game. They're fresh. They're early. Yeah. Cool. You so know. hopefully we've got them at a good time. I don't want to check if they are fresh actually. When did this account start? June 16th, June 26, oh. 2019. No, 46 weeks ago. And yeah. they've got 27 posts. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's super fresh. No. So that's like a post a fortnight. I wanted to do these guys because Honey is such a beautiful product to shoot. And I yeah. naturally feel like there's a lot of content you can create yep. for a Honey brand. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, it's heaps. Mm-hmm. And especially for a Honey brand because I find Honey brand's kind of like one of those it's like a chutney brand. It's kind of something that you could have at the markets that would sell really well to tourists. Mm-hmm. So you could put it into like a little tourist shop and have it. But then also people would want to buy pure honey online. Absolutely. I think it's a gold mine. Yeah. Um, something to mention is they don't even have an online store on this. It just says drop a DM if you're wanting some honey, honey emoji. So... It feels a bit sketchy. It feels like I'm going around the corner to buy some drugs straight away. <laughs> 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 Just drop us a DM. Drop us a DM. <laughs> if you want to get hooked up with the well, honey. You fully went there, didn't you? Does, All right. It does have that feeling. Yeah, okay. And also, I, don't, I can't see Just their face. Just let us know how many liters you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I can't see their face because they've used a stock image of a bee as their main profile photo, which I think- Which the, I think is fine. It's fine. Actually, something that- is an interesting. It's an interesting thing to know about Instagram. Is the te- the temptation for businesses is to put your logo as your main as your main profile photo. And there is a school of thought that thinks that is that like that's a great idea. So if you're a big brand like Shopbop or um, Nike, it would be Skoda. great to put a logo. Yeah, Skoda, like a global brand. But if you're a like uh, a mama and a papa. A mama and a papa, a small business. Sometimes putting your face is also really effective. What do you think? Do, should these guys put their face on it or their logo? Do they have a logo? No, I would say their logo. I yeah, would, actually, I would really right. say their logo. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Megan. <laughs> no, but there are... <laughs> but yes. Because on Instagram, sometimes people connect more with faces. But I think you're going to show your face throughout the feed. And, th- and yeah. the stories is going to be out throughout the feed, True, but you're trying to push a brand. They're not influencers; they're a business. No, yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys, it's had nice. a little brain fart then. Um, so they actually have a really stunning minimalistic logo, guys. If you want to see it, it doesn't. It won't take much much time. You just scroll down, like one scroll, and do the very first post. You'll see their beautiful jars. Gold label, very mini- 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 minimalistic. <laughs> and like, I love the logo with the bee just sort of z- zooming around. Yeah, cute. It's really cute. Cute. So I, I, that I, would perfectly align. That would, you could just change that into a circle and put that on there. Yeah. As a branding perspective, um, I don't think it's fantastic because there's no connection to Loch Ness whatsoever within the brand. It's mm. just a bee. Like, it actually looks like a an American kind of style of lo- of of honey logoing. Um, <laughs> oh, American. what do you mean? Like it's just kind of like a Disney kind of bee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as a, as a branding perspective, what's, what's Loch Ness got to do with that brand So you're saying image? that they're missing an opportunity to really capitalise on the pure location yeah. that the, the honey is harvested from. Yeah, like if you think about like a Bondi brand, for example, a Bondi mm-hmm. surf brand, there would be some kind of connection even just to the colour yeah, of, 
of what Bondi washes or something like that. Um, but let's let's do the whole shebang. So yep. should we do the compliment sandwich? Yeah, compliment sandwich. I feel like cool. So let's start with So let's talk through about through the feed and the content. Okay. Let's pick about three posts that I'm a little bit I'm I'm confused by. Well, I'm super confused going through it really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's scroll down to I'd say halfway down there's a picture of a plastic spoon and it says at Loch Ness honey, what's this hook all about? Hashtag Talking about McDonald's, hashtag plastic, hashtag Big Mac, hashtag curious. So Talking about the talking about the I don't know if there's a hook on the spoon. Talking about the Scotland. hook on the spoon. No, well that's I think I actually think that that hook is so that you can hang it on the edge of your cup. But anyway. Not relevant. Uh, not relevant <laughs> to what. Why are um, we talking the, about the, the spoon? spoon? Yeah. So it starts, the bottom of their feed starts off and it's product. Product and then. Something. A photo with no caption, no hashtags. It's a John Ross. Oh, it's a video of them sucking out bees. Oh, right. Oh, okay. These guys, see, they, they have the right idea. Like, I want to see a video of how they harvest the honey and suck out the bees. So, I feel like they've just... But it's so it they must feel, be... I think they think that taking a screenshot and sharing will share the video. Maybe, potentially. But that's not but it's, how it works. Yeah, so, but it's obviously John Ross, so he's some he kind of connection. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and then it's... Cool. Oh. So then it's a photo of them um, withdrawing honey and then it's honey, honey, honey and then it's cute puppies. So it kind of goes into personal life a little bit and then it gets a little bit random. And then there was a one, probably one more random post, but I don't want to focus on it, bad stuff too much. But one more random one is a photo of the Shetland Police Department saying if Scooby-Doo can pick up his poo, then so can you. Yes. All right. All right, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to talk about the good and what to do. Or what to do. Cool. And how to ha, let's hack how to fix these guys. Cool. All right, we're back. All right. So this is this is the love part. This is when we basically tell Loch Ness Honey Company how to fix whatever is going on on this page. Yeah. So Dom, three pillars: content. They've got well, thirty I think, twenty-eight I think just to, to thirty start, posts a month. I think just to start off with what she has up there, she needs to remove. All personal, what not make, personal. What? Sorry, all all. What's that one? It's oh, a photo. Sorry, it's a, it's a photo, photo of, of a boat. the shipyard, and it says, "I do hate shopping." Yeah, so I think she's got a sense of humor. I think she's saying she's shopping for a ship. I do hate shopping. All right, you know what? I don't We're get not going to focus on it. We're going to just light a match to this, and I would start. Yeah, we cool. need to do as we do, guys. In every episode, we build content pillars. If you're just tuning in now, a content pillar is just, say we put um, Loch Ness Honey in the middle and the pillars are what holds the brand up in terms of content. So all the little lines of things that relate to Loch Ness Honey. So beekeeping tips, I would put that on the side. Yep. Um, I would do kind of slow-mo shots of the honey drizzling just for fun. Well, so you just do the pr- the. The product straight up. So but I think product. a really cool, fun, creative way could be like, what if you had Unchained Melody playing and then just like, whoa, my love, my, my darling. darling. <laughs> and just, my or like, oh no, forget Sorry. that song. Any song with the word honey in it, you could have like a little clip of it, like less than honey, 15 honey, seconds. Ding, 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 and then ding, just drizzle ding. it. You have a lot of usages issues with that. I uh, know. Oh, How yeah. the hell? Do people get around that? Yeah, I don't know. We, we could talk about that in the next episode. Yes. Um, so, product shots. Product shots. Beautiful product shots. Hire a photographer and get beautiful product shots. Hire them for a every, day. Not every shot needs to be perfect, no. though, guys, because I know that budgets can be tight. But a few core images of your team. Yep. So, harvesting. Harvesting. Like, how fascinating is harvesting? So, so Har- harvesting, mm-hmm. um, what they do to harvest. So pulling them out, they get in their suits, they pull them out, they vacuum them out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, showing me the queen. Uh, I want to see what the queen looks like. Yeah, cool. So photos of all of that, of the bees, of mm-hmm. them harvesting. So that's one pulling, pillar. You know, that's one pillar, harvesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then preparing the product. Yeah. How do they get it? How do they get it out of their, you know, yeah. their hives, the honey out of the hives? Um, and then bottling, so mm-hmm. it being bottled, mm-hmm. 
and then the final product in in a in a look and feel that is Loch Ness. I feel like we're being super functional this episode and I want to just pause for a bit. Because honey is super easy. Like It is easy, but the- can what you know what's hard? Let's try and come up with a hook. Like what is a hook? What would make the average Instagram user stay hooked to this page? I, now you've got to think laterally. Yeah. So I think I think that's kind of the lowest common denominator. Yeah, right? what is we've just told you to do. Lowest, lowest common denominator, stuff. easy stuff. That should be your bread and butter honey content. But we're going to try and think of a lateral hook to keep people in. For instance, there's this dog groomer. I forget her name, but she she's huge on Instagram because she got mega by just whenever she finished a dog grooming, she would blow dry the dogs to like Celine in Dion slow, yeah, in, in slow, slow motion. And it was just this really funny, cute, cute way of finishing her sh- things. So and she's got 500,000 followers. So how she got away with using Celine Dion, I don't know. But you were just talking about doing the, the drizzling, drizzling and, and having honey, honey. Yeah. So that's a kind of a cool concept. That is one hook. It's, it's not completely finessed yet. And let me try and think of another one. Typically... Typically, and this is, you know, from a typical standpoint or at least from where I see honey keepers and beekeepers, they are typically very much uh, about harvesting and good w- – and, and, and environmentalism. environmentalism and all that kind of stuff. So mm. I would kind of tie it into a full, I suppose, ecology of what you are about – in terms of the garden being pure, and look at these flowers, and look at these, look at my compost, and you know, look, you know, having that whole like, look at these lambs and all that kind of jazz. I don't think that's the complete hook, but I do think that's another pillar. Yeah, that's another one because you could be if you had your face to it. I don't know who runs this account, but if you put your face to it and got known as an advocate for for bees in Scotland, yeah, that isn't just a great way to market your brand so as I well. So I think you could go away. I, I think you could go the the way of of the tips and this is how to yeah. do honey and this is how to um, be a beekeeper. But the concern is then are you selling beekeeping, which I don't think is an issue because to start up bee colonies is a cost. You know, for people that are interested in getting it's into about, bee colonies- Yeah, it'll set you back about $1,000. I've researched it. So, <laughs> yeah. I forget, yeah. It's, you know, to get a colony of bees. Mm-hmm. So, that costs money. That could be another side product that she could sell, potentially. Yeah, or, like or flow here. hives or something. Yeah. You sell the system and you sell the, the, the bees. But I think in terms, of, in terms of selling the honey as a product, I would just have beautiful- Flavor notes. Uh, you could discuss its flavor notes. You could discuss why the notes f- taste like that. Um, why? Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's ever going to be. I don't think it's going to be a a hook product. And every product can be hooked for the gram. The reason they're on Instagram, if that's what you're about to ask, is because something like seventy percent of sales come from Instagram. No, no, no. I get I I get being on the reason for being on there, uh, but. Why are they? Why, okay. What? What? What is their reasoning for being like? Okay, let's let's try and when we think about when we talk about the hook, sometimes it's easy to get caught in trying to think of a hook that's kitschy and cute and newsworthy, and people are gonna like spread it on the news and be like, check out this account, it's so funny. Let's take it back a bit because sometimes people follow accounts just because they're aesthetic. And they're inspiring. So if maybe Loch Ness Honey took a note from... That's kind of what I mean. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I'm coming around to it. So if Loch Ness Honey thought of themselves more as um, River Cottage, if you know what that is, I'm really showing my age right here. River Cottage is one of those shows on like the ABC that your mum used to watch and it's about living off the land and (laughs) recipes and like showing... Is that not the guy down in Tasmania who does that? Is that that dude? Yeah, but it's a very... He's a chef or something. It's it's just a beautiful, relaxing show. And so whenever you watch it, you feel a sense of comfort. You feel like you're on the land. You just... Shots are so moody and aesthetic and... 
I think well, I think he's living the dream that everyone wants, and I think that's from the, what that's they what can I'm, sell. That's what I would. That's what I'm saying. So Loch Ness Honey on Instagram, instead of selling just honey, you're also selling the dream of being a beekeeper. And people buy into that. Yeah. So people go the glamour of I, having some Loch Ness honey. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy we got that. Sometimes it takes a little bit, you know. They can't always. Yeah, be we're easy. doing it. Can't it can't always be million dollar ideas, <laughs> but we are just doing this in twenty minutes. So, anything else you can think of? No, I think realistically, ah, I think one of the big things she, she or he needs to work on is uh, the copywriting and tone. Okay. Yep. So I think if we're thinking about this as a whole brand and stepping away from just the Instagram for the moment, mm-hmm. um, I, I think that there's things that they could work on in terms of the look, the feel, the connection to Loch Ness, the connection to the honey Mm. world, Mm. not just we are pouring honey. Yeah, yeah, the environmentalism. the environmentalism. Slow motion shots of the honey. what Loch Ness is about in terms of honey. Like what does honey mean to – Not every shot needs to be about honey. It can just be of the – the stunning surrounds or getting up early in the morning and putting on your beekeeper's outfit like – like if you shot it kind of with some low light with sun streaming in. Yeah. Like I think that – think of it like a gourmet traveller kind of shot. Yeah. That would just be so beautiful. Um, and Instagram, they don't even have an online store. So if they get their Instagram right, their online store, it'll be less work for them because all they do is go on Squarespace, create a beautiful online store as an extension of the look and feel of their Instagram. Yep. And the tone – Look, the tone needs to be more about we as a company, like third person. We care about this, and I think we're we do striving this. to save bees. Or this we're this striving. week, we did this. Yep. We took a walk because there is a cute little photo of a chicken, a uh, chick. Not honey or bees, just cute. cute. Hashtag free, free range. range. Hashtag Easter. Hashtag dinner. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what are you going to do to that chicken? <laughs> but they can. They can. If it's it's probably an ethically raised yeah, chicken. Yeah, well, it is. It's free range. It's cute. Yeah. It's cute. It's, bit, it's also dinner. <laughs> it, so, how I would rejig this photo is I would shoot this beautiful Don't golden shoot it. In- Don't shoot it at all. <laughs> Don't shoot, shoot it. Just, I would shoot this just chicken. Take a photo. <laughs> Please. I'd shoot it beautifully and I would write probably about three or four lines about sometimes now you that's, know, that's we stuff. stand for ethical farming. Yes. We believe this. We totally understand if you want to eat meat, but look mm. into your meat sources and you're just talking about where you stand. We are coming from the country of black pudding, so. This is, yeah, this is Scotland, yeah, right? This is so <laughs> they breathe them tough up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but like I like where she's going, or he, or they. We are don't know going, who it is. No, they are going with with the chicken. I just, yeah. Yeah. So they just took a flat photo of a chicken. So there's just a way to elevate it. See that they they're doing a slow motion of some honey pouring. They need some brand colors. They've got their logo down. If you could just incorporate that logo colors into some of their messaging, guys, they need a Canva account stat. Yeah. <laughs> Um, guys, we only have twenty minutes. Yeah, if but I we just had like, longer. Yeah, I think there's. We would do a brand guideline uh, with them. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think there's work on their tone. Yeah, work on their colors, and build just a presentation of an overall aesthetic, and then spend a day shooting, and then delete all these photos off their Instagram. Yeah, then a day or two. <laughs> a day or two shooting. Yeah. Um, in terms of engage, do you want to just touch quickly before we go on engagement? Who they should engage with? Should we touch? Should we touch quickly in terms of who they enge- should engage? Well, with? they follow ninety-seven people. Let's just have a look at who well, they follow. Yeah, I think realistically, they should be connecting to all the town little shops and markets um, in Loch Ness. I'm sure there's roaming markets that they could do. I'd say they should follow Visit Scotland if their feed's going to be beautiful. Um, I want Visit Scotland to be yeah. aware of this business. I feel like they could be doing uh, – hitting up – you know, I'm sure there's uh, companies ah. in Edinburgh and stuff well, that do they gifting. F- well, they follow Chef – oh, you know, stop gifting. it. Genius. Yeah. 
You just so corporate, genius ideas just giving. fall out of your brain. So this Cunny company, look, I know restaurants are st- struggling at the moment, but hopefully we will all go back to normal very soon. This honey company needs to hook up with some of the restaurants in Inverness and get their honey in the restaurant yep. and talk about how that restaurant uses their honey. Well, could and they then also use do that like, chef as an advocate for their honey? Yeah, could they also do like could we like collaborate with a chef to make a yep. honey chicken? Genius. It's going to be hard for them to collaborate when they ha- only have this many followers. So maybe yeah. that's an idea down the track. But in order to scoop the followers so you can collaborate with a chef and get bigger and better, you're going to need a tight, well, but I think tighter it's than kind tight of just feed. like a good joint venture that they could potentially do. Oh, so then the chef gets content yeah. for their feed. Yeah, or something. they kind of arrange something together. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah. All right. All right. I fi- we finally got there. I think we got there, right? We got there. <laughs> um, Sometimes it's hard. But I think realistically, <laughs> like for them, they could easily hire a photographer a day or two mm-hmm. and just go through the process with them yep. and get the photographer to take beautiful shots. And when, you, when the photographer delivers the shots, ask the photographer if – they can help maybe give you a filter for when you do photos off the cuff as well yep. because you want your feed to be very cohesive and one of the easiest ways to make your feed cohesive is, is to have, have a preset and a Lightroom preset or a filter for people who don't know Lightroom yep. um, that you in. agree on for every photo. Yeah. So there you go. And then just work on the tone of voice and you're done, son. Yes. All right. High five, best friends. Thank you guys for sticking with us for five episodes now. It's been a roller coaster. Last week we did Mace and we've done a real estate agent. What have we've done? A propane company. Propane. Propane was my favorite, he I think, because it was our first good, one. Dude. So, um, thank- and then the next week we're going to do usages. Oh my God. He can barely <laughs> contain himself. So strap in. Dom and I are going to have some arguments. I'm the layman who used to screenshot and share, and Dom is going to tell me why that's not a good thing to do. Well, it is. It's it is blurred line. <laughs> he can't there even are wait to blurred lines. He can't oh wait God. till next episode to do it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. As always, sharing is caring. Is caring. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for listening. Um, and don't forget to join us on Facebook at Content Crusaders Podcast Community. We have 138 people now. Oh, booyah. We share memes. We talk about episodes, talk about business. So, yeah, do it. Um, also, if you're having a problem and can't solve it, throw it up to us and uh, send us an email at hello at citizensoftheworld.cc or connect with us on Instagram at citizenscontent or leave us a voicemail. Our number is plus six one eight six one one seven eight four four eight. That number again <laughs> oh, is plus six one eight six one one seven eight four four eight. Sorry, I <laughs> couldn't read the number. It. Glad you've got all that information <laughs> written down, Coos. Yeah. I'm really glad that we're talking about usages next episode. Yeah. So, guys, uh, stay tuned and thank you so much and for s- listening or watching or doing anything. anything. And stay safe. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye.